For the past almost 20 years, I have been an educator, a trainer, an advocate, and a counselor. The agency that I work for provides services to victims and survivors of domestic violence, sexual assault, and all other serious crimes. Hmm, all other serious crimes. What exactly does that mean? Well, armed robberies, carjackings, muggings, stalking, and human trafficking. Now, when I was first approached to be an educator for human trafficking, I've been a pretty perceptive person all my life, and I felt that if that was going on in my community, in my hometown, I would have seen signs of that by now. So I always start out all my talks with the quote from D.H. Lawrence that says, what the eye doesn't see and the mind doesn't know doesn't exist. And what that means is, I didn't see it. I didn't know it existed. There were no signs around me so therefore, I thought it wasn't an issue. But I also realized that I had a very wrong definition of what human trafficking was. So I've seen the movies. I've seen the TV shows. Just like all of you have probably seen Taken, Taken 1, Taken 2, Taken Again, Still Taken. Matter of fact, on Netflix, I think you can be taken weekly. But all joking aside, that's not what the definition is. That's not what's happening in our hometown. We don't have a father like Liam Neeson who is traveling continents to bring his loved ones back home. What I'm going to talk about today is human trafficking of minors that are happening right here in our community that are the throwaway kids. They're the forgotten kids. They're the ones that nobody goes looking for and nobody cares to venture out for. Human trafficking by definition, just so we're clear, is modern day slavery. It's the exchange of a sex act for an item of value. Usually one person selling another person like a commodity. And that doesn't have to be cash. It doesn't have to be money. It can be food. It can be shelter. It can be clothing. It can be anything that has any assigned value to it whatsoever. It's an act by a means for a purpose. So all of these things you see on the slide behind me, the act, transports, facilitates, harbors, any of those where the minor victim or any victim is being coerced, forced, or through fraud tricked into the life that has been very misleading to them for the means, which is whatever it takes for a trafficker to trick a victim into this situation, and the purpose is ultimately to sell that victim for sex. Who is trafficked? I want to give you all the who, what, where, whens, and whys of all this. And I want to be able to prove to you that this is happening in our hometowns, in our communities, and in our backyards. So it can happen to anyone. What my conversation is about with you is that this happens to mostly minor girls. That's according to statistics through the Department of Justice and other data that has been gathered across the board. So with it happening to anyone, men, women, boys, girls, they can be US citizens, they don't have to be US citizens. They can be vulnerable populations are mostly the targets. And as I mentioned, mostly minor girls. Now we ask ourselves, how do these kids get themselves into these situations? Well, it's not necessarily these kids getting themselves into this situation. It's these kids being tricked and lured into this life. They're promised hope and that any future is better than the position that they're in. Many are approached by individuals claiming to be boyfriend material or husband material. And I can guarantee you a better education. I can guarantee you a better life. I can give you more love and attention than what you're getting now. 
But if the grass is greener on the other side, that's something that we have to think about. And sometimes things are too good to be true. And if they're too good to be true, that's because they are too good to be true. But manipulating a child's mind, if an adult is very savvy and very clever and knows exactly what to do and what to say, they're able to do that. The mind of a child is easily manipulated. My first encounter with a victim of human trafficking in my own area was several years back when we as individuals that work in our agency go on an on-call rotation. And I happened to answer the phone on one particular day, having the phone for the weekend. And a young girl on the other end was explaining to me her situation, where she was, what was happening to her, what was expected of her, and she just gave me the whole situation. But she didn't consider herself a victim of trafficking. She was telling me about the abusive relationship that she tried to get out, contacted a friend back in this area who drove to Harrisburg to get her, to bring her back to here. Anna was the young woman that had been placed in a motel room less than seven miles from my home. It got real. I drew a blank. I didn't know what to do. I had to kind of scramble. And I gathered my thoughts. And I thought, this woman is describing to me everything that I have learned about victims of domestic sex trafficking. The commercial sexual exploitation of victims in Pennsylvania and in our community is prevalent. She was three and a half months pregnant. She reached out to a friend who ended up turning out to be the bottom girl, a recruiter, for a well-known trafficker just in the next county over. He still walks around today. Now, she was being added to his stable. When they brought her back into this area, in just the snap of your fingers, they took her to Walmart, bought her clothing, very seductive clothing, had taken pictures of her, and had posted her for sale on Backpage.com. Now, for those of you who don't know what Backpage is, Backpage is much like Craigslist. They have a lot of different classifications, a lot of different categories of things for sale. And in this particular case, there was an escort service section where they were selling minor kids for sale. Now, when the federal government reached out to Craigslist and told them that they were also selling kids for sale, Craigslist immediately shut that portion down. But Backpage, because of the revenue this was generating, did not. PolarisProject.org operates the National Human Trafficking Hotline. And as you see here, what I've singled out is the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And if you look at Common the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, you will see all the hot spots that the signals indicate where there has been suspected or reported cases of trafficking, mostly of minors. When you look through there, you will see the line that is supposed to go up through the center, lining, aligning with Route 15, is the number one corridor in our geographic area for transporting victims of trafficking. Now, we all know our geographic location right here today, and Route 15 is not that far from us. These victims are transported north and south, east and west, all across Pennsylvania, all across our country, and they are sold for sex, sometimes bouncing from trafficker to trafficker to trafficker, but many of them will be branded or tattooed with their trafficker's name because they're a piece of property, and that way, when they want to be or can be returned to their trafficker, people know where to take them and where to drop them off. These victims are, through force, fraud, and coercion, tricked, as I mentioned. They're addicted to a variety of drugs as another means to get them to do what they're supposed to do, to do what they're expected to do, and to do what they're being demanded to do. It's shocking to think 
that the number of victims when we think of trafficking, we think of the victims being transported in to our country. And although the numbers are staggering, the numbers are only 14,500 to 17,500 victims are trafficked into the US every year according to the Department of Justice. But the victims that are trafficked within the US borders in a given year are between 100,000 to 300,000, and again, mostly minor girls. The Department of Justice indicates that if a child runs away from home three or more times in a 12-month period, they have an 80% higher chance of encountering a trafficker and being trafficked. This is one kid too many. One kid too many that's out on the street that are being forced into this life, being threatened, being beaten, being told that, yeah, you can leave, but your 10-year-old sister will take your place. They're embarrassed by the fact that they're doing what they're doing. They're being blackmailed. They're being horribly, horribly treated and scared and terrified to death to leave their trafficker. Now, some people have said, why don't you just leave? Why don't they just walk away? Because they're scared. Fear of the known for these individuals beats out fear of the unknown. They know what to expect. They know what's happening to them. And they know that. And they fear that. But getting out on their own, pointing the finger at their trafficker, is in some cases a death sentence for these victims. The number of minors that are trafficked throughout the United States could fill 1,300 school buses. That's how many kids are being trafficked and sold for sex. I want you to take a look at the pictures behind me just quickly. What you're gonna see is the mug shots um, from a Denver police officer who had these individuals arrested. This is the same one. This one girl was arrested for prostitution and every time she was arrested for prostitution they took a mug shot of her. And you can see the progression from each mug shot as how to uh, identify the uh, types, the abuse that this victim suffered and the addiction, the drug use that this victim. Traffickers will use a drug as, well here, this will help you get through this this will help you do what you're supposed to do. Or they will withhold the drug and say, well, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, then you don't get this drug. And to an addict, withholding a drug is just as bad as giving them the drug in the first place. Who are the traffickers? It can be anybody. It can be the guy next door. It can be the neighbor. It can be the businessman. See, my superhero capes are in three sizes. The first one was, let's go talk to the victims, tell the victims this isn't how you have to live your life. There's services, there's agencies, there's people out there that can help you. Well, these victims are terrified. They're not gonna leave. They're scared to death to point the finger or testify against their trafficker. And so we're kinda at a loss. My next one was, these are pimps. These are sometimes boyfriends. These are sometimes parents, step parents, foster parents, grandparents. It, it, the list goes on of those who decided that getting out of poverty was the way to do it, was to sell a family member and cash in on all this. The profit, because it looks so good, is $150 billion a year. That's an income that is generated across the U.S. for trafficking. So the money is the motivation. Traffickers are one step ahead of the law. They don't have to follow the law. Now, police do in order to make an arrest, but traffickers know how to avoid all that. And they usually have the victim end up holding the cash, holding the phone that made the appointments, everything. These victims of trafficking are helpless. They feel hopeless they feel that there's nothing more in their life for them than this. So when we couldn't reach the victim and we couldn't reach the, the uh, trafficker, we decided to investigate a little bit and through documentation of arrests and criminal charges, we found out that the profile of a sex buyer who drives the 
organization and the, the, the demand for trafficking, is a white male, works full time, educated, married, makes a pretty good income between the ages, the first category was 30 to 39 and the next was 40 to 49. One of the things we need to understand is, these kids, they are not for sale. They shouldn't be for sale. When we see something, when we suspect something, we need to report it and we need to make sure that we're doing everything we can to help these kids not get tricked into this life. Remember that, I am not for sale. Have conversations, bring awareness to this issue, make a difference, make a change. Thank you.